Module 9, Managing Conflicts Productively Managing conflicts productively means handling disagreements and differences of opinion in a way that leads to a positive outcome for the group. Conflicts are inevitable in group communication, and it is essential to manage them effectively to prevent negative consequences. Conflict is a natural part of human interaction and occurs when discordant ideas or feelings are expressed or experienced between two interdependent parties. This definition highlights the importance of communication in both the expression and management of conflict. At its core, conflict arises when two or more individuals or groups have different goals, values, or perspectives. Conflict can manifest in a variety of forms, ranging from minor disagreements to full-blown disputes. It can occur between individuals, within groups, or even between entire societies. One of the key factors in understanding conflict is the notion of interdependence. This means that the parties involved are connected in some way and their actions have an impact on one another. Interdependence can take many forms, such as shared resources, common goals, or mutual dependencies. Myths about conflict Myth 1. Conflict is harmful and should be avoided. The reality is that conflict can help members understand an issue more clearly. Conflict can improve decisions. Conflicts can increase member involvement. Conflict can increase cohesiveness. Myth 2. Conflict can help members understand an issue more clearly. The reality is that conflicts can occur over differences in values goals or resources. Myth 3. Conflicts can be resolved if parties are willing to discuss. The reality is that conflicts over values may not be resolved. Conflicts over resources may be resolvable if values are compatible. Types of conflict Conflicts are inevitable in any setting where people work together, including in workplaces, teams, and organizations. Understanding the different types of conflict can help in addressing them effectively. Here are three types of conflict that commonly occur in workplace settings. Task conflict. This type of conflict results from disagreements over ideas, information, reasoning, or evidence related to the work. It is often work-related and can be procedural, meaning it is about how work is to be done. Task conflict is based on the belief that diversity of thought and perspectives is valuable in creating effective decisions. When managed constructively, Task conflict can lead to improved problem-solving, decision-making, and creativity. Relational conflict. This type of conflict results from personality clashes, likes, dislikes, and competition for power. It is rooted in the belief that one person or group is superior to the other. Unequal workloads can create this form of conflict, where some team members feel that they are not contributing enough, while others feel overburdened. Relational conflict can lead to decreased productivity, absenteeism, and high employee turnover rates. It is essential to address this type of conflict to ensure that all team members feel valued and respected. Process conflict. This type of conflict occurs over how to do something and members' contributions to the group. It deals with how the group will accomplish its work, and it also involves how much group members contribute to the group. Process conflict has both task and relational dimensions. It can be constructive when it leads to a better understanding of the task, roles, and responsibilities, and how to work together. However, it can be destructive when it hinders the group's ability to complete the work. Pseudo-conflict. This is a type of conflict that occur when individuals agree but because of inaccurate communication they think they disagree. Conflict types and computer-mediated communication. Conflict is an inevitable part of human interaction, and it is no different when it comes to computer-mediated communication, or CMC, groups. CMC refers to the use of digital tools such as email, chat, and video conferencing to communicate and collaborate. Here are some factors related to conflict types and computer-mediated communication. CMC groups initially display more relational and task conflict over procedures. CMC groups may experience more conflict than face-to-face -face groups at the beginning of their collaboration. 
This may be due to the lack of nonverbal cues that are present in face-to-face -face communication, which can make it more difficult for group members to establish rapport and build trust. In addition, different communication styles and cultural backgrounds may lead to misunderstandings and conflicts over procedures. Conflict decreases over time more so than in face-to-face -face groups, while CMC groups may initially experience more conflict than face-to-face -face groups, research has shown that this conflict decreases over time. As group members become more familiar with the technology and their roles within the group, they are better able to communicate and collaborate effectively. This can lead to a decrease in both relational and task conflict over time. CMC groups are better able to manage conflict once they know the technology. CMC groups may have an advantage over face-to-face -face groups when it comes to managing conflict once they become proficient in using the technology. This is because CMC platforms often have built-in features that can help to manage conflict, such as private messaging, anonymous feedback, and document collaboration tools. Group members can use these tools to communicate and address conflict in a more controlled and structured manner. Managing conflict in the group. One way to manage conflict is to understand the different approaches to conflict resolution. These approaches can be summarized by answering two questions, how important is it to satisfy your own needs, and how important is it to satisfy the other person's needs. There are five conflict management styles, each of which has a time and place in which they are appropriate. These styles include avoidance, accommodation, competition, collaboration, and compromise. Avoidance is when a person is unwilling to confront or engage in conflict. Accommodation is when a person is willing to engage in conflict but backs away from it by giving in to appease the other party. Competition shows a preference for coming out ahead at the expense of the other party. Collaboration shows a preference for working with the other to find a solution that pleases both parties. Compromise shows a preference for giving a little and gaining a little. Integrative approaches tend to elicit better decisions. Integrative approaches to conflict management, which aim to integrate the goals and needs of all parties involved, tend to lead to better decisions and outcomes than competitive or distributive approaches. Group norms are a way to productively manage the different conflict styles within your group. Managing conflict is also a cultural phenomenon. The manner in which you disagree can affect how the conflict unfolds. All group members should express disagreement ethically, in a timely way, in a constructive manner, and react to disagreement with inquiry. Effective communication can also maximize your chances of influencing the group in a positive way. Make sure your arguments are of high quality and consistent. If you are a member of a subgroup, make sure all the subgroup members publicly agree with one another. Two specific techniques for managing conflict in the group are the nominal group technique and principled negotiation. The nominal group technique is useful when dealing with controversy and results in supportive conflict. The steps include stating the problem clearly, listing features of the problem, allowing the group to work silently, listing each suggestion in a round-robin fashion, clarifying items, ranking each item, engaging in a discussion of top-rated items, and reaching a decision. Principled negotiation is a procedure that encourages people to search for ways of meeting their needs without damaging relationships. The steps include separating the people from the problem, focusing on interests instead of positions, inventing new options for mutual gain, and insisting on using objective criteria. By using these techniques and approaches to conflict management, groups can effectively navigate and resolve conflicts in a productive and positive manner.